All right, you guys, good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you and help you learn a little bit more about breastfeeding today. I have my coffee with me, so I'm ready. <laughs> today was an early day and we've been doing a lot of late nights packing and getting stuff around, so I'm ready for you guys if you're ready for me. So both boys I breastfed and their stories are both completely different, as you guys will see. Not everybody's breastfeeding journey is the same. And I just want to say at the beginning of this video that if you don't breastfeed, you are not a bad mom. Don't let people shame you. I hate when people do that. A happy baby is a fed baby. The best baby, the best way possible is a fed baby. So you do what your baby needs. Do not let somebody pressure you into doing something that you don't want to do or not comfortable with. I'm just here to tell you my story on my breastfeeding journey, not to shame anybody or make them feel like they have to breastfeed. That's not my goal here. My goal here is to help you be maybe a little more educated on breastfeeding and just learn about some of the different experiences you might have or that you might come across. So, my breastfeeding journey started with my two-year-old, Blake. Hi, buddy. And um, what had happened is we went to the hospital and I had Blake. And three days later after we got home, we ended up back in the hospital. And we actually got transported down to the children. So basically hospital. what had happened was my milk had not come in and I had no idea, you guys. This was my first baby. I didn't know at the hospital. They kept asking me, have you had a letdown? Do you feel anything? Like, I don't know what a letdown is. Like, sure, yeah, I think so. When in reality, I wasn't. And we ended up taking him, like I said, to the emergency room because he wasn't having wet diapers and he had like this eerie cry and um, we were all scared. And my mother-in-law was actually the one who kind of pushed us to go in because we just, as first time parents, we didn't know, we thought it was normal, but she, she could tell something was going on. So we took him in and he got rehydrated and everything. The kid never had any formula at all. He was exclusively breastfed, but while we were there, I was so nervous about not knowing that my milk hadn't come in that I pumped the whole time we were in the hospital and he was fed through a bottle that way. And as we were getting to, ready to leave the hospital three days later, the doctors and nurses kept trying to get me to latch on with him and he was latching pretty well. It was a struggle sometimes, but I was just so scared. When I had when I pumped and was feeding him through a bottle, I knew that he was getting something. When he was hooking up to the boob, I had no idea. And that scared me. I did not want to be in the hospital with him. So, for 11 months, I exclusively pumped. And for those of you who don't know, pumping takes a lot of effort and a lot of time and it takes a lot of understanding and it was hard. I felt like I was hooked up to my pump all day long for 11 months. Um, literally every two hours for 15 minutes to 20 minutes pumping. And without that baby having a latch on there, my milk supply started to dwindle. At first it was great. I had so much milk that I actually overproduced, but once I hit like the four month mark, it started to dwindle where I literally, what I pumped is what my baby got. Um, and it was scary because I, I was stressed for four, for four months, he hit four months to 11 months. What I was pumping was what he was eating at that time and I didn't have any extra. And that was so scary to me. I always had formula just in case I needed it and I didn't need it but it was hard guys like I felt like I was hooked up to this machine all the time I felt like I had to stay home because I wasn't comfortable pumping out in public um, and I felt like I just it was so time-consuming and it was a stressor 
and like don't get me wrong I wouldn't have it any other way my baby still got breast milk he was able to feed and not have to spend that money on formula and everything else but it was just hard and when you are um, exclusively breastfeeding through the boob your baby has a suck it has a suction and um, it can pull all that milk out that you're producing However, when you pump, it's still pulling all the milk out, but it is nothing compared to a baby's latch at all. And I ended up, I don't know how many clogged ducts. I had at least one or two every other day. It was awful. And um, a clogged duct is a blockage of your milk ducts. They're just basically trying to flow to get out to feed the baby and they end up getting clogged because you don't like get it out all the way or just sometimes they clog. So that was really hard. And I also ended up three times with mastitis. Um, and that was awful. I ended up in the ER where they would give me medicine where I could not feed the baby because this medicine was affecting in my bloodstream. And that was always hard. Like I said, when it came down to those days where like, I just had enough milk to feed him. So um, that was that was so scary. And I didn't think that I could do it, but I did it for 11 months, guys. I am super proud of myself. And um, anyone who exclusively pumps, I give you so much praise. Like it is so hard, but it's worth it in the end. It really is. Um, now I'm going to move on over to Liam, and I breastfed Liam, well he's still breastfeeding because he's only seven, almost seven months old, but I was so scared about bre breastfeeding when I got pregnant with him to the point where I had decent to bottle feed that I wasn't even going to try breastfeeding because I was just so nervous about everything. And I knew that I would not be able to have the time to uh, sit down and pump when I've got two little ones. Blake was only a year and a half when I had Liam. So it was, it's just, it was too much I thought. So like I said, I was focused that I was going to do formula. Well, time came to have Liam and I had not bought any formula. I was considering breastfeeding, but I wasn't sure. I was still really on that formula type mind until I got to the hospital and had him. Um, I figured, you know what? I'm going to try for the first two weeks. The first two weeks are the most important for breastfeeding to, that, to get that colostrum and get all those rich antibodies. So my goal was to do it for two weeks and to see where it would take me from there. Um, so I did that and while I was in the hospital, like I said, I was super nervous about not having milk or having what happened with Blake happen to Liam. And I told my doctors and my nurses my concern even before I even went in to have him. And they were so supportive and helpful um, and listened to what I had to say. And they just listened to my concerns and addressed them. They helped me latch Liam, I don't know how many times, but after every feeding, I pumped on each side for five minutes. And I was not producing a lot, but it started to slowly, gradually build up. Um, I continued to do that when I got home. So I knew my milk supply was in because even after him feeding, I was still having more come out. And that made me happy to the point where I decided, you know what, this is working. My son is producing wet diapers. He's gaining weight. Like he looks healthy, he's this happy, chunky baby. He's not crying that he's still hungry or anything. So I decided that I was going to breastfeed Liam. And I just, I was so thankful for all the doctors and I still am to this day. Make sure you guys reach out. If breastfeeding is something you wanna do and you're scared, let your doctors know, they will help. Really, they do. And like I've had a lactation consult come and work with me. Um, I've, I've called and they've come and done like a home thing with me. Like they will get things to you to make this possible if this is something you would like to do. So 
my kind of schedule with Liam is I would wake him up every two to three hours to eat when he was first born. And I know you guys are gonna say it, two to three hours, girl, how did you get any sleep? How did you manage with a toddler? Let me tell you something. It wasn't easy. <laughs> it was not easy at all, but it got done, you guys. It, it did. Every two to three hours, a lot of people um, I had telling me, you know what? They're sleeping. Don't ever wake a sleeping baby. Like, they need that rest. I had doctors telling me, and also because of everything that happened with Blake, I wanted to make sure that he was getting that food and producing and everything else. The doctors even said, hey, at this time, it's most critical for them to gain that weight and for their liver and everything, they need to be fed every two to three hours. So that's what I did, and I set an alarm on my phone every two to three hours. Um, and then I kept that going, but at nighttime, I did every three to four hours, I would wake him up to eat. And I did this for Liam's first month, month and two and a half of life. So I did not get a lot of sleep, but in the end, you know, it was worth it. Every parent's gonna do what's best for their child and this is what was best for Liam. So that's what we did. And then after that first month and a half, I started to move. I still did the two to three hours during the day, but um, at night, I started to spread it out more, four to five hours. Um, two weeks later after that, I went to five hours if he hadn't woken up. And after that, it just kind of moved to whenever he woke up at night, I'd get him, I'd feed him, and he'd knock back out while he was eating, and he'd be down for the night. So, that's what we did. And we stayed on that schedule until he hit six months old, and he started eating cereal in the morning after he got done breastfeeding and he did really really well with that you guys um i was surprised at how well of an eater he was blake kind of struggled he didn't really understand or know and liam it was like he'd been eating his whole life you guys like it was crazy anyways so at first we started off with just um two ounces of breast milk with some cereal and mixed in with fruit um, and he still doesn't eat all of that to this day. He usually eats about most of it, but not all of it. Um, so we started with that and we started feeding him around 8, 7.38. Um, then he breastfed at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And we did that for two weeks and then we decided to add on to dinner so at dinner i gave him a vegetable after i breastfed him um and we did the same schedule it's just at five we did the food the breastfeeding and then the food um and he really enjoyed that he is not a picky eater blake was awful all he ate was sweet potatoes and freaking <laughs> squash that's all i could get that kid to eat but this kid eats everything Liam does. So he does really well. And right now we're starting to kind of like introduce lunch, but he's still not really into it. So like I'll give him like a rice rusk or like a banana. But other than that, like he's just not really hungry at that time yet, which is okay. But so that's what we do. And um, I had a friend who contacted me who is kind of having a hard time right now because her son is still constantly waking up in the middle of the night to breastfeed. And he is close to nine months, 10 months, I believe she said. So for us in, this, in that situation, um, we've had one night before where Liam was three months old and he slept through the night. And he slept from seven o'clock at night till five in the morning. So when he did that, that one day, I knew, hey guys, like he can sleep through the night. He's nursing to comfort. He's not nursing because he's hungry. If he can go through a night without eating, he's fine. 
you know, obviously if he's hungry, I know he's going to be hungry and I'm going to go feed him. Like that's just what's going to happen. And, um, it's always been hard for me to hear my kids cry at night. I've always been one of those parents who just can't, can't deal with it. Um, and he would wake up and just, he'd nurse and knock back out and nurse and knock back out. And it was like four to five times a night. So I was like not getting any sleep at all. But eventually once we, um, he hit six months and he was started eating food, I was like, okay, this is a time that he really needs to be on a schedule. They have that six month regression. That's what he's doing right now. We need to get this on handle right now before it gets any more serious to where he's going to be doing this as he gets older. So we lay him down at seven and there's a couple of times where like he's crying at night and we just kind of let him cry for a couple minutes and then go in there and just put our hand on him and just like kind of rub his stomach a little bit for like a minute, give him his binky and walk out just to reassure that we're still there, um, that we're not leaving, but this is time for sleep. So that's what we started off with. And guys, the first two nights were really rough. I'm not going to lie, but Liam is such a quick learner and he, he adjusts so well. He really, really does. Um, that he's just always been go with the flow and he figured it out so fast. So we went from there to where he'd wake up at two and want to eat. And that lasted for about three or four days. Eventually he slept through the night. Now I always rock my babies and I always feed them right before they lay down. <laughs> now, now, right now, um, sorry, that's a lot of nows. As of now, there we go. As of now, I lay Liam down in his crib. He's usually in there for like two minutes and he falls asleep all by himself and he's asleep all night. Sometimes he'll wake up during the night and I just let him either cry it out for a couple minutes and if he's not falling back asleep, I go in, give him his binky and he's knocked out before I even leave the room. And he typically wakes up at 7.30 every day. So going to bed at 7 and waking up at 7.30 is great. Um, he's doing really well. At first he'd wake up at 5, but then he slowly kind of got into that rhythm. Um, so for those, for those moms who it's a hard thing to hear your kid cry, I understand it. I get it. I really do. I never thought I would be one of those moms who could just lay your kid down and kind of walk out and let them fall asleep. I always thought I had to be holding them to go to sleep and feeding them to go to sleep. And that's not true, guys. They have hit, I feel, when they hit that six month mark, that they are big enough to start that schedule with them. And if you don't start that schedule with them, that's going to affect them later on. Um, and I know it's hard. It's really hard, I went through it. But I'm hoping my advice right here can help you guys. Just continue to let them know that you are there, but this is nap time. Now, when I say let them know you're there, like I said, rub the stomach, give them their binky, give them a kiss. Do not pick them up out of their bed and rock them. That's just going to teach them that every time you come in, you're gonna rock them or don't pick them up, same thing. You just got to let them know you're going to be there without doing those things. And I know it's gonna be hard, but you guys, you're gonna get sleep in the end. You're gonna get rest that you finally need. And it's just something we have to do as parents, especially when you have more than two, you've just, you've gotta do it. So other than that, um, I think I am all done. Honestly, the reason why I breastfed is I loved the bond that I created and it was free. So that was that was always a good benefit. All those antibodies that I create, when I get sick or I'm around somebody who's sick, it changes my milk to that way it protects the baby so the baby doesn't get sick. And there's been so many times where either I've been sick or Blake's been sick and Liam has not caught it and I know it's because of that. And the same thing vice versa when I was pumping for Blake. Um, so it was always awesome. And even like when people were sick around us, I would grab like the milk that I had saved from when I was sick and I would give it to him and he would not end up getting sick. 
and that that was just awesome because the milk covers them you guys it covers them from sickness not all the time but um it does help so i am blessed like i'm blessed that i was able to do this some people can't um and that's not anybody's fault it's just the way the world works sometimes so i hope you guys enjoyed my video on breastfeeding Feel free to comment any questions you have and I will try and answer them. Make sure you subscribe to me so you can see all my other videos and um, share with other friends. You know, everybody is going through this that are moms, they are gonna need that support, um, whether they're formula fed or breastfed. I think I have covered some tips that are even gonna help when they are formula fed, so. Like I said, comment, like, and share, subscribe, follow us on Casually Spec Vlogs. We post all the time on there, so make sure you're on there. And I hope I was helpful for you guys. Like I said, if you guys have any more insight that I didn't cover, please feel free to comment. This is a community where we're helping each other that we have started, my family. and. I, if I don't cover something, I know somebody else that has a question, you can get that covered and we can help each other, like I said, as a community and we can have that faith in each other and give each other support because honestly, that is all you need. Just one second, baby. You want to say hi? That's all we need is just that support. So we are going to go. I'm going to go play some games with Blake. Oh, you're not having coffee? You crazy. <laughs> so, you guys have a great day. Um, enjoy your day, and we will get back with you guys soon. Thanks for listening.